Hey everybody, this is Julie Phelan again, here with a Tax Tip Tuesday. You see? Tax Tip Tuesday. I should do that. Tax Tip Tuesday. Yep. One of the week's tidbits that I'm bringing you, and this has to do with taxes, because we're all talking about taxes right now, and taxes are really on the forefront of a whole lot of people's minds. So here's a few things that I just want to tell you about real quickly. One, there have been changes in the tax brackets, and it's interesting because let's say that if you earn $75,000, you'd be in the 22% tax bracket. But that doesn't mean that your income is going to be taxed at 22%. Some will be taxed at 22%, some will be at 10%, some will be at 15%. So you're going to have to talk to a tax advisor to figure out what it is that your rate is going to be. Secondly, if you are a saver, you have until April 15th, essentially, to put money into your 401k or your IRA and count that towards your retirement money and deductions. I definitely encourage everybody to do that because that is money that you will need for your retirement down the road and it's something that is going to keep growing. On the other hand, if you take it out of your 401k or your IRA, which is not such a good move and hasn't been, there are a couple of changes in the rules too. Now you actually will have three years, not two, not one, but three years to put money back into your IRA and not have to pay the penalty or the tax. You'll have to pay it in the first year, but then you can get that other penalty money refunded back to you as you pay the money back into your IRA. Now that's if you have a traditional IRA. If you have a Roth IRA, you don't have to worry about that because you have funded that Roth IRA with money that you got after taxes. It's not pre-tax income. So that's a really good thing and one reason that I really like Roth IRAs. Second or third, there is a thing that a whole lot of people don't know about and take advantage of and it's called the Earned Income Tax Credit. Now first I want to tell you the difference between a deduction and a credit. Okay, so a deduction is something that you charge off essentially against your income and then are able to reduce your taxable income. So let's say you've got a rental property. You have to pay a manager. You have to pay for some repairs. You may have to pay utilities. You're definitely going to have to pay property taxes on that. All those expenses you can deduct from your income because those are things that you have to pay in the course of running your business, right? So that is a deduction. A credit, on the other hand, is something that basically comes off of your refund or off of the money that you've already put in dollar for dollar. So let's say that your tax liability is $5,000 and you have some kind of a credit, well that's going to be taken against that $5,000 that you owe dollar for dollar. So there's a tax credit for low and middle income workers and that is workers earning up to $56,844. For the 2020 tax year, you could be eligible. Uh, depending on your income and your filing status and how many children you have, the credit could save you anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars, which is pretty amazing on your taxes. Here's the crazy thing, though. About one in five taxpayers who qualify for this don't even know or don't file a tax return at all. So don't let that be you. Don't let that money that you have coming to you from the government go without taking it. That would be silly, wouldn't it? That's why we have the tax tips. Okay, again, if you have kids, families can shame up to $2,000 credit for every child. Okay, kids cost you a lot of money. Everybody knows that. So here's one of the benefits for it now. You can get a $2,000 credit, up to $2,000 credit for each child that's qualified with this tax credit. And the income limits are not $56,000 on this. The income limits are actually Huge. They're two hundred thousand for a single person, a single worker. Four hundred thousand dollars income limit for a couple filing together, a married couple. And since it's a refundable credit, your family can receive up to fourteen hundred dollars per child as a refund once you claim that credit. Isn't that cool? That's pretty amazing. That increases your refund. There's lots of other deductions that you can take in credits that might be up for grabs depending upon your situation. And if you don't want to miss out on any tax savings, talk to a tax professional, talk to a tax advisor. And much as I love TurboTax and some of the other things that make it for easy tax filing, if you have kids or if you have this money or deductions or you want that earned income credit, it really is better to talk to a tax professional. So now let's talk a little bit about the coronavirus and your taxes, okay? So one of the things is in the stimulus package that went out in 2020, where people got up to $2,000 per person for the economic disaster, that is not taxable income, which is great, right? Yay! 
Yay, we love that ta not taxable income. Excuse me. However, it is being treated like a refundable tax credit for 2020. So that means your stimulus check is sort of like an advance on the money that you've already that you would receive anyway as part of your tax refund in 2021. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Basically, it's not taxable income, but it counts as a tax credit, dollar for dollar. It's going to be coming off what it is that you owe to the IRS or what is your refund. The big thing, of course, is that it's not taxable. Uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP loans, again, that is money that is a loan. It's not income. You don't have to claim it as income. You do, and you still can actually claim the deductions that you needed the loan for, like payroll taxes or payroll period, office rent, utility supplies, whatever it might be, which is kind of neat because a lot of people were worried that if they got this Paycheck Protection Program loan, that they wouldn't be able to re uh, deduct those expenses, but you still can deduct those expenses. Again, though, talk to a tax advisor and a tax professional to make sure that you absolutely are doing the right thing because you don't want to get messed up doing the wrong thing because basically that was to help struggling businesses and you still have those different expenses. So regardless of where the money is coming from, whether it's revenue for your business or it is from the Paycheck Protection Loan, you can still deduct those business expenses that you have. There's a lot of flexibility and fluidity in this year's tax code and the tax changes. Also, the tax brackets have changed, so you're able to earn a little bit more money without having to pay a higher tax rate, and that's really kind of a cool thing. Regarding the PPP, though, and any other loan, COVID-19 disaster loan, economic impact disaster loan you might have gotten, check with the SBA and your local area and your local office to make sure you're not on the hook for the amount that you've gotten on the loans. That's it. That's your Tax Tip Tuesday. I'm Julie Phelan. This is Julie Talks Money. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back every day with another tip for you. Bye-bye. And if you like these tidbits, then go ahead and say like and subscribe. That'd be fantastic.